Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, this is Marcy from Prints and Paints. Uh, today, since the holidays are coming, I figured I would do a tutorial on a Christmas ornament. Um, this is a standard three inch glass ornament. If you find something else that you like, um, by all means, you can try it out. Um, we'll only be using two colors for this tutorial. I don't know if you can see it, it's a little bright. Um, the color I chose is like a champagne uh, color and then I have a dark turquoise color and then the shiny uh, color, the top coating, is uh, like a metallic ice blue. Um, so we're going to use a blank one for this. I like to find something that I can fit the ornament in, so whatever you like, if it's a mason jar or something, I always use this. So this is my go-to owl uh, to do tutorials. And so you're just going to place it on its side. Try to line up uh, it perfectly well like that, okay? So again, supplies you're going to need is an ornament, whether it's plastic, glass, um, most standard large ornaments come in the size three inches or more. Uh, the colors you're going to need, the exact colors if you need to get them. If you can't get these, try to just, uh, you know, find something else that you, you can actually get your hands on. Um, the two colors I'm going to use is the brand Apple Barrel. This brand I find at Walmart. It's fairly cheap. Um, the color is called Tuscan Teal, and then this metallic color is by Folk Art, and it's metallic ice blue. So these are the two colors. Um, I'm going to use a tray today, and then your stylists, you're going to use, the highest number you're going to use is a size 14, and you're going to go down from there, okay? Um, maybe get some Q-tips in case you mess up and a little bit of water. So I use a little water dish. Um, and I think that's all we're going to need and some paper towels to clean off of your, uh, oop, to clean some of your, you know, your, your stylist off. So that's going to be all your supplies you need for this project. Okay, so to get started, we're going to add a little bit of the blue. Technically, this blue is going to come second, but we can still put it in our tray. Now, one thing I want to make very clear. When you're doing ornaments, um, you, you really don't want to water down your paints. I know for my mandalas, I like to water them down. It makes a nice cohesive dot. But if you are doing ornaments because of this, you know, round shape here, gravity is going to naturally want to pull that paint down. So um, that's why I recommend you finding something to rest it on its side. Um, if you're holding it, you also could potentially slip it out of your hand and then you have to start all over because the paint gets everywhere. Trust me, it's happened to me quite often and we want to avoid those headaches. So try to find something that's going to rest perfectly in there and do not water down your paints. So they're gonna be straight out of the bottle. The first color we're gonna start with, so I'll put this one here as a reference. Okay, so we're gonna start with this center teal dot. You're going to use the number 14 stylist. All right, and we're going to dip it in our dark teal color. If you'd like to use different colors, by all means, get creative with it. Okay, so I usually just eyeball this. I don't like to draw on these only because um, sometimes it's really hard to get lines off of these, especially matte-based um, ornaments. Okay, so we're just going to do our first dot. That's the last time you'll use 14, so you can set it aside. All right, so it's already setting nicely. I don't have to do anything to it. If you find that your paint's really thick, obviously you can take a smaller stylist and move it around. Okay. 
Okay, so these dotting tools, we're going to do the number nine, and you're gonna start either north, south, east, and west. Do those first, and then go back in and fill in your X, all right? That is the best way to get them looking even. I say so, I think so. So get enough on the bottom so that you have that little bubble form. And you're gonna do one on the side, like so. And then you're gonna do, you're gonna do north. I'm gonna take this off real quick because it's hitting my camera. Okay. You do whatever feels comfortable. If you want to hold it, by all means, go ahead and do that. Sometimes I find myself doing that. So, and even if you want to move it so that, you know, if you're right-handed or left-handed, I find keeping my wrists locked like this helps keep my hand very steady. I normally don't have a uh, shaky hand anyway, but some people do. So that's a good way as that's a, I guess, I guess you could say that's a, a painter uh, technique to do. It's to lock your wrists up like that and keep them very steady. Helps keep a steady hand. So you're just going to go around like that. And so you're going to do your north, south, east, and west, and then go back in and fill in the negative spaces. Okay. So just like that, it's going to look like a little bit of a flower. All right. All right, so now that you did that, you're gonna flip over your stylist and use your number 10. So it's gonna be slightly larger, the, the, the next dots. And the next dots are going to be in between the other ones, spaced out enough to where you have to, because we're going to go back in with a smaller stylist and we're going to fill in these tiny little dots right there, okay? So, get that focused okay so your number 10 dot it and then you're gonna go in between just like that and go all the way around now as you start to taper down off the sides of your ornament you might want to take a few breaks and I actually sit there and blow on it lightly so that it creates a bit of a crust on the top and it it starts to dry because if they're real wet they're all going to uh, start dripping down the sides and you don't want that sometimes you have to go back twice too and get that nice little dot so when you first do these I want to see if I can get closer to this and actually focus and show you. Okay, so when you first do this, do you see how you have that nice little round dot and it's almost centered, do you see? It's kind of like a bubble inside, that's what you want. And, and then as it starts to settle, it's going to um, like even itself out throughout the entire thing. Let's get that back in focus, okay. That's my kids, if you can hear them. <laughs> Tormenting the cat. Okay. And really, you just want to dot it just enough to make the dot. You don't want to glop this on because it's best to even go back one more time than to put a lot on the first time around. As any painter, um, you want to work in layers sometimes with paints, especially in this case because of the, uh, the roundness to this. Um, these are very delicate and they're very fragile, so to speak. They're, you know, you want to take your time when you do ornaments, that's for sure. Okay, so that's what it should start to look like. All right, so now that we're done with our large dots, we're gonna clean this off. And then um, we are going to move into using the smallest stylus. We're gonna use our number one tip. 
all right? And you want to get just enough on the tip, tiny, tiny bit. We're going to go back in, and in the beginning part where the inside is north towards the large dot, you're going to want to dot a tiny little dot just like that. And then I also do one like that on the outside, okay? Let's see if you can see that, okay? See those two dots? We're going to do that for each one of them, okay? I think my lights are too bright. I can never get this right. That's okay. These are a lot of fun and they're, they're, they make wonderful gifts for people around the holidays. If you're afraid to try it, I urge you to try this tutorial and keep moving with it because you'll, you'll eventually get the knack of it. Um, for a long time, I didn't like doing ornaments. I like my flat surface where nothing can shake and roll and fall and, you know, eventually practicing. I practiced on plastic ones that were cheap from the dollar store, and so I didn't feel like I was wasting my money and my time and effort. So I got a whole big box of them after Christmas and then started painting them. And, you know, as I progressed, I got better. And now I feel confident doing them on a nicer, um, more professional-like material. It's all about confidence and, and being able to do this, which I know all of you watching this, if you're learning how to do it, this is a good step into achieving that. Okay, so now that we did those number ones all the way around, we're now going to move into doing, probably we're going to do these, um, these dots that go around the number 10, all right? And with that one, we're going to use probably the number three. Let's see how the number three looks. So number three, we're going to do... You're going to start at the bottom so it lines up with the dots, like that, and then I'm going to taper all the way down, just like that, okay, on either side. You want to do something different and just do like one side, and that's fine too. Sometimes I like to do that and switch up the style of it. And you, you create a design like that where it's just the one side, that's really pretty too. It's a little bit cleaner sometimes. I am going to do both sides, I think, with this one. I like this pattern um, because it reminds me of a snowflake. So I chose to do these wintry colors. The champagne, the snow, the, uh, the teal, and the, the ice blue because it reminds me of the ice and the when the lakes get frozen. Leave in the, the comments in the description. I'm curious to know where everyone's from. Do you have winters? Do you go through that? I live in Pennsylvania and we, we used to have some really bad winters. Um, lately, not as much. I'd say in the past few years, they've been very warm. Um, we might get a big snowstorm here or there, but we're usually okay to get out the next day. I see most of the time in the Midwest, in the States here, you guys usually get a lot of snow. Um, if you're from another country too, yeah, I'm curious to know what your winters are like. Are you going through winter right now? Or are you in your summer? Okay, so that's finished. So that, that's actually a pretty pattern, just like that. I think we're going to keep going, though. Just like that. So the, work, the number three actually works out really well. I think it leaves nice, perfect little dots. If you're, um, you know, a beginner, too, and you feel like, oh, man, how does she get those dots to look like them? I never look tapered. Practice, 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 practice. Even if they look horrible, 
just keep going, keep practicing, because let me tell you, I've been doing this for a few years now, and because I never gave up and I keep doing it, um, I found I'm able to achieve the looks that I once wanted to do, if that makes sense. <laughs> I... I practiced a lot. I practiced on random things like cardboard and wood, anything I could find scraps to so that, you know, it wasn't breaking the bank. <laughs> Try to clean this off from time to time too because you'll notice you'll your dots will start getting a lot larger as they taper off because you're getting a buildup on the tip. So, almost done with this. Okay. And last one. Perfect, good. Okay, that's it. All right, so now our next, um, our next one we're going to do. Now you can either try to use the stylus number two in the white. I prefer to make swooshes with the metal stylists that have the ball tip to the end of them. Um, for some reason they just make better swooshes. Swooshes are the teardrops. All right, so we're gonna use the number two stylist to make swooshes. We're gonna make these swooshes right here. This is kind of what gives it that um, snowflake look design to it. So what you're gonna do is a little bit further down, I'd say about from where, where your dots are lined up the center, I'd say eyeball it down about an eighth of an inch. Okay, and you're gonna dot. I might need a couple, a little bit more on this. You want to get a nice amount. So if you have to keep dot dotting the center to get that nice amount of uh, paint, and then you're going to pull towards the center, just like that, all right? Well, we're going to do the pulls first. So we're going to do all of the center ones first, and then we'll go back through and we'll do the side ones, okay? So again, an eighth of an inch, and try to just imagine a line coming around so that you don't have one way down here and one way up here and one <laughs> all around. You want to keep that aligned. So really just imagine an imaginary line going all around. So like when you do this next one, you want to just line yourself up. Even if you do that, I usually do that. I draw like an imaginary line with my stylist just hovering right over the area and then you want to pull yourself in if you're slightly off it's okay we're not here to be perfect in everything right all right My paint's getting a little, little gloopy here. It's all right, we just wanna make sure. We're gonna have to probably wipe it off because I noticed like my pulls at the end here are getting slightly thicker than they are over there. And that's, usually it's just your stylus is getting a buildup of dried paint. It gets gloppy, gloppy. And the last one, perfect, just like that, all right, that looks good. And now, I'm going to set this aside, 
I'm going to get my stylus number one. You want to have these slightly smaller. So we're gonna we're gonna dot it. I'm gonna do two dots right side by side like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in an angle to join the two, just like that. Okay, so I dotted and I pulled. See if I can do this closer so you can see it. So I dotted like that and I dotted down. I'm also trying to keep it uh, horizontally level so that they are matched up. And I'm going to pull up and at angle. So you're doing this motion. You're starting dot and you're going up like a C, like you're making a backward C. Or in this case, you're going this way, like clockwise. So again, dot, pull up, dot it and pull up. And you only want a little bit of paint. You don't need the, a lot of paint on this. That's why I use a very small stylus that it's kind of impossible to get a lot of paint. If anything, you're probably gonna go back and dip and dip, which is okay. I'd rather that than have a big gloppy mess and then you gotta erase the whole thing. Because these are patterns are so intricately together, um, this is kind of a, a hard one to fix if you do make a mistake. But it is very beautiful, and I love the detail in it. And I think it's perfect for the holiday season. Okay. Okay, so now that we've finished our snowflake pattern, we're going to use our number seven stylist and we're going to create these small tapered dots right here. So we're gonna just dip in and where the dots are, not the, the swooshes, but the dots, we're going to dot one, the top one right below it remember when you're doing this eye it up so that you're looking level at it so you're looking straight on it because if you do it over here when you dot it when you turn it and look at it it might be off so try to look at it straight on when you're doing this project it'll help keep things in line properly and then you want to do one night next to it and one on the other side. So it looks like that. These, I feel like I did these a little bit further apart. If you notice, they're more, this one's a little squished. So maybe do it a little further down. You know what, let's fix it. I'm gonna show you how I do this. So I get a Q-tip. I dip it in some water and then we're going to just carefully remove it just like that. You don't want to go back again with this so we're going to flip it around. Dip it again in water. I usually dab it on my paper towel before so it's not like a huge pool of water. So it's just damp. And then we're going to wipe again. As you wipe you just want to um, spin it down. Let's get another one. I usually like to stock up on these because they're a great tool for cleaning anything off. It helps a lot. 
You don't have to get all of it, just get enough to, you know, so it doesn't stain it. The dry one, I usually like to go back over it real quick. Good. We're just gonna turn it and come back to that side. All right, let's try that again. Number seven, got it. So let's try this again. I'm gonna do it right here so I could see it. Dot. And then we're gonna go down a little bit. So I'm gonna go a little bit further down. So I have a little bit of a space in between the two. They're not right next to each other. And we'll do next one. And we'll do one right next to it like that. It looks a little better. Sometimes I notice when I do things, I can't go back and do it again the same way. Does anybody ever have that problem? I mean, I could probably sit here and try to perfect it. It also could just be because I'm on camera and I'm trying to show it. But yeah, for some reason I can't, I can't mimic things sometimes. It's kind of bizarre. Oh, I know what it is I did too. Now, see, I caught myself. I had these two dots together, and then the other ones I have on top of them. Mm-hmm, that makes sense. That's why they look smaller. I'm gonna leave it if you, if you wanna see how to do it though. It's funny, you know, most people I think would edit this out. I think it's important to catch your uh, mistakes, but also recognize them so that you can learn how to fix them. And by me not doing it the way that this one looks, goes to show like, I've caught my mistakes and now I know how to fix them, right? Um, when you come up with your own design sometimes, you, you do something but then you forget how to do it, you know? So, okay, so doing this, I normally would do one dot here, one dot right next to it like that, right? And then do the one down below. And that's how you would get that upper part like that, okay? I'm gonna keep with what I was doing though. Let's, let's quickly get rid of those little dots I have. The bada, okay. <laughs> Okay. As Bob Ross would say, there are happy little accidents, right? <laughs> Sometimes happy little accidents make like the most beautiful design anyway. Because this just changed the whole outlook of what that one is and that's what I like about doing dot paintings and mandala paintings is that the design is forever changing it's always looking different even like I said when I do these I could do this one I did that one, and then I could do this one, and it looks totally different than that one. So, it goes to show. <clears throat> okay. Let's just finish these up. shaky hand there. Mm. 
And the last one. Okay, perfect. Okay, so and now our last part before we have to stop and let it dry is going to be the tapered tiny little dots at the bottom of this. Okay, with that one I'm going to use my number two stylist again. And I'm just going to dip it once in the paint. I'm going to line up the bottom dot probably with the rest of this so it creates a nice straight line. So you're eyeballing the center of this dot and you're following yourself down to the center. And then I just dot three, just like that. I don't dip and dot every single time. I do it once. So again, dot the center, do three more. So do one, two, three, just three dots. Okay. These start to get a little tricky because you're getting more down to the bottom. So you want to take your time in these. If you have to leave it on something, go ahead. I'm I'm holding it. Just be careful where you put your fingers because you just stick it in the paint and then you got to do it all over again. Okay. Any more paint? Here we go. Okay. Let's turn it. I gotta turn it somehow. I know some people like to use, um, they can like take this off and put a dowel in there and hold the stick while you do it. Um, I've never been very successful with doing that because uh, if the dowel isn't the, the perfect size of that opening in there, then the ornament just kind of flops around on a stick and it's almost impossible to keep it steady and straight. So I prefer to use my hands. Um, you do it for a long time though, you'll, you, you will notice you're getting tired and you'll, you might drop it. So when in doubt, try to keep it on your standing, your, your, your object you put it on. Okay, so that's that for teal. The next one we're going to do is the ice blue. Um, Okay, so we're back now and we're going to, I've let this dry. It's not 100% dry, but it's dry enough to where we'll be able to do the overtop dots. So we're gonna work with the ice blue, okay? Um, we're gonna start with the center dot. We're going to do the number 10 stylist tool and we're just going to dip it in our ice blue the metallic ice blue and you're gonna just want to do it centered the best you can I usually don't go all the way down I just try to eyeball it you're gonna get a nice little pull away from that too all right 
So that's where we're gonna do that one. I sometimes wanna go back through it again and just kinda make sure that it's like perfectly round. This one I usually like to focus on the most because it is your center dot. It is the most appealing to, you know, when looking at something, your eye is gonna wanna draw closer. So if you can just get your stylist and Make it nice and even all the way around. I don't want to pull too much because it is a little wet still. Um, all right, so that's number 10. The next one we're going to do, I think we're going to do the number seven. Yeah, I really want to just be a little bit uh, slightly smaller than the other dots. So we're going to do number seven because we did number nine before. So we're gonna, just going to go back and back to and again try to eyeball it as best you can and dot it again I'm only applying light pressure to this so I'm just slightly dabbing it I'm not really going all the way down with the dot I think if I did do the dot all the way down it might actually cover the whole dot so if you want to go a little bit smaller, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, by all means, maybe try a, um, a number five dotting tool. This way you can apply all the pressure you want and it'll only be so big. I like to do a little bit bigger of a size like this because it leaves that nice um, raised dot to it. It gives it some texture, some dimension to it as well. Sometimes when you're working with the small enough dot to fit perfectly, you can't achieve that. Okay. And then the last one. Good, perfect, just like that, all right? Now, the next ones we're going to do, I think we're gonna do uh, let's see what eight looks like. Because this was a size, uh, this was a size 10. So, let's see what eight, or, or maybe we'll do seven and just do full pressure. Let's see, let's, let's try seven again. Yeah, we're going to do seven. Okay, so... Let's keep it with seven. And when you're gonna do this, let's see if you can see this. I want you to be able to understand what I'm talking about when I do full pressure versus none. When I do none, I don't even go all the way down. Do you see how, where I stop? It's like slightly just resting there. If I was to do full pressure, it would go squish and flat and it would spread out. You're literally like an eyedropper. You're literally, I'm even doing it at an angle if you notice, I'm not straight on. And I'm just eyeballing it so I see, I'm really just paying attention to that that outer part of the teal on where, like this one's a little off. I probably could have did this a little bit more centered, but I'm not gonna go crazy trying to fix that. Um, you really just wanna eyeball that and see, and then you get that nice raised look about it. You see, it's like a, yeah, let's fix this, okay. Um, so we're gonna do this one, okay.
Okay, just like that. Make sure you keep this like sitting upright so that it doesn't start dripping down. All right, and then we are gonna do the last one. We're gonna leave these alone. We're not gonna go over those. We're just gonna do the last dots. And I think that one we're gonna do a size five, a number five dotting tool. All right. And again, you're gonna apply light pressure if you apply too much paint, they could potentially start to drip down too. Remember that. I know those are the two most important things you need to think about when you're doing ornaments is how much paint's being applied to it and if it's going to, you know, drip down the sides. These, like I said, can take quite a while to finish. So if you wanna just watch the video and then attempt it, if you wanna go along with me and do it, um, I want you to be able to have a nice outcome with this. So take your time. You notice the paint does tend to like pull too. It will start to like get a little tacky. Okay. Carefully move it around. Remember, if you're left or right-handed, to keep that stylus nice and tight. Keep that wrist tight. So that you're controlling it with the upper part of your hand, not so much down here. You keep things tight like that when you go to put a dot in, and they'll be very nice and perfectly aligned. Oh. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So we finished our ornament. Um, let's turn this down a little bit. Can we do that? Let's turn down the light a little bit there. I want to be able to show you our finished product here. So this is our finished product. Okay. Um, they look pretty similar. This one I think is a little bit smaller in size. Probably a little bit more proportioned, honestly. It's a little bit tighter, but it does look really beautiful. I love the um, accent, the, the highlights to this. I think it looks really beautiful hanging on a tree. So um, I do hope you enjoyed doing this one. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the description. Um, comment and um, don't forget to like and share and uh, subscribe if you aren't already. Um, I will be doing more hopefully in the future and uh, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.